following show is controversial and contains content you may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. And we've nearly reached the weekend yet again. Good morning. How are you? I'm Adrian Kennedy and this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. The mid-morning talk and phone-in show for Dublin, by Dublin and about Dublin. We are here until uh, midday today and being Friday we do things a little bit differently. We will have uh, Good News Friday a little bit later on. We've got our Say What You See quiz uh, coming up. I also want to talk to you about embarrassing stories from Christmas parties and in years gone by. Uh, you may have heard Cooper and Luke mentioned earlier on that uh, we've got our Christmas party tonight. And it's that time of year where everybody in the office dresses up well and lets their hair down. Um, and if, 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 like me, you've been to many a Christmas party, you have some tales to tell. And I would love to hear your uh, stories of things that went wrong or just things that are embarrassing. You know, you couldn't look at one of your colleagues the next day because of something that happened. I'd love you to text me on 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. I'd love to hear your stories of uh, embarrassing, um, cringeworthy things that happened at Christmas parties uh, in, in years gone by. And I have... Um, I want to reward you uh, sharing your humiliation. Uh, I'll give uh, cinema passes for IMC cinemas uh, a little bit later on, okay? So I want to hear from you your embarrassing Christmas party stories. We all have one. Every single one of us has one. And we'd love to hear uh, yours, okay? So text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98 and let us know what are your embarrassing Christmas party stories. We're also going to be having a conversation a little bit later on and I'm going to warn you now and I will warn you again later that around the 11 o'clock mark we are going to be having a conversation on this program that Little Ears should not listen to. Okay, It's about the man from the North Pole and it's a conversation that is an important conversation to have but one that I'm very conscious that little ears should not be listening to. Okay, so please be warned if you have little ears uh, of Santa, uh, Santa age, I would urge you to take them away from the radio a little bit later on because we will not be fielding any complaints um, as a result of the conversation that we're going to have. Okay, so uh, I've told you now and I will give another warning a little bit later on. If you have children of a Santa uh, age, please don't have them listening to the radio uh, between kind of 11 and maybe half 11, 20 to 12. Okay? And I'll explain what that conversation is about uh, a little bit later on. In fact, you can, if you log on to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D, you can see uh, the conversation there right now. And you can contribute to that conversation. I'll say no more, I'll explain it all later, but you have been warned. Now, I wanted to press this button here. 98 FM's Christmas Lights with Flexify. Keep your cash and spread the cost with Flexify. 98 FM. This Christmas at 98 FM, we are on the search for the best Christmas lights in Dublin. And we want to thank each and every one of you. And we had thousands of pictures sent in. Uh, each and every one of you who sent in your pictures and nominated your favourite house. Well, we now have two finalists and it's time to vote. Will our winner be Serena Mooney in Drimna? Or will it be Emer Whelan in Cabra? Both have their houses looking amazing. Have a look at the photographs on our website, 98fm.com slash Christmas Lights. Okay, 98fm.com slash Christmas Lights. And vote for the one that you want to win. Have a look at the photograph and uh, you decide which one should win a thousand euro with thanks to Flexify, Ireland's latest way to pay, Flexify.com. And um, either Serena or Emma will have their ESP bill paid for free. <laughs> thanks to Flexify. So please do check the, check the photographs out. The shortlist, the final two are Serena Mooney and Drimna, e Emma Whelan and Cabra, 
Uh, photographs of their houses are on our website right now at 98fm.com uh, slash Christmas lights. Have a look at the photographs and then uh, you vote and you decide which one is going to win. Headlines in one of the newspapers today, uh, in the Sun newspaper today, in fact, reads, Families are taking back the liberties. A local community in uh, the south inner city are going head-to-head with Dublin City Council in a bid to stop a planned super depot from filling up space that they say should be used as uh, a sports pitch. And I'm joined on the line by uh, Zoe Obiman, um, who is... Um, a local from the Liberties who has set up a petition against the plans by the uh, City Council. Zoe, welcome to 98FM. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Zoe, firstly, tell me what plans the Council have for uh, this this particular plot of land. Uh, the main plan is for a super depot, um, which will be kind of a consolidation and it will be kind of storing waste trucks for the city and it's completely the wrong use. Like... Basically, it's going to be a missed opportunity um, to build a lot of housing in the area. And then also they want to put a sports pitch there. But they've missed the point, like, because we need a full-size sports pitch, not a 7 by 7 pitch. So that's, that's one of the things. That's one of the misunderstandings. OK, um, now this, this particular site uh, is currently occupied by the council, uh, a vacant engineering services firm and a former bicycle factory, uh, as well as St. Catherine's uh, Sports Centre. So that's what's on the site at the minute. What the council plans to do, I understand, is to build 100 houses, which I'm sure we'd all agree are desperately needed, um, and then uh, a large depot for all of their trucks, their gritters, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, the hundred houses obviously are badly needed. I'm sure you'd agree. Yeah, I'm on the housing list myself. Uh, I live in Oliver Bond, and I'd be quite high up on the housing list. So I'm really happy about that. But the thing is, we don't have enough houses. A hundred isn't enough. We need we need a complete change of attitude. We need the whole site, basically, in my opinion, given over to housing for local people who live and work in the area. And then it needs to be supported by green space, uh, you know, for the kids to play out. And um, we need a big sports pitch, as I say, for for all the local teams, for the hurling, for the football. You know, Oliver Bond have an amazing football team. We're really, really proud of them. But they're having to travel up to Grange Gorman. Like, that doesn't make sense. And that means it's really hard um, for the for the kids to take part and, you know, for the supporters to go to it and everything. So we really need that full-size sports pitch. Um, OK, you know, so the nearest... a lot more housing. So the nearest full-size sports pitch is... Where did you say it was again, sorry? Well, Oliver Bond, Celtic, um, they'll be one of the most successful teams in the local area. They're having to travel up to Grange Gorman. Grange Gorman, OK. Uh, which is a long journey from the, the Liberties. Now, um, around your immediate area, then, there are no full-sized uh, sports pitches in a day and age where we're encouraging kids to get out, to get fit, to get involved in sports and everything else. Exactly. Exactly right. And it needs to change. And um, this depot idea has been around for years. And it might have been a good idea maybe five or ten years ago. But I think we need to be a lot more ambitious uh, pe- people are feeling really angry. Like I know, but people really they're feeling hurt and they're feeling let down um, by what the government's doing with housing. And you know, we're just hoping. What I'm hoping with this petition is, I'm just reaching out. I mean, I'm just a mum at home with four kids, but I felt I had to reach out and just say, look, you need to support us. You need to support the people in the area that are that are doing the sports that are you know, supporting community development, are kind of trying to, you know, coach the kids and support the kids. We need we need funding from central government and we need support from central government, you know, to keep our community alive, basically. That's what it's down to. OK, now, the, the, the plans that the council have are uh, to use the site to build 100 houses, a depot for their trucks and their gritters and whatever, um, and two all-weather pitches, one a a seven-a-side and one a a four-a-side. Now, that's uh, something, is it not? Um, It just just shows a complete misunderstanding of the fundamental issue, which is that it has to be a full-size pitch. And the whole point of this is that the teams like Liberty Saints Rugby Club, they'll be able to have their... 
competitive matches. They'll be able to kind of get people to come into the liberties, to the matches. And then also Kevin's hurling. That's been around for about 100 years. That's our national sport. And we've nowhere for the, for the kids in the liberties to go and play a competitive match of hurling. OK, That's I'm wrong. sure you support the plan for the 100 houses, do you? Of course I do. I'd, I'd probably be one of the people offered that. But I think we need a lot more than 100. 100 isn't good enough. 100... Do you know what 100 houses is? It's like crumbs from the table. That's not good enough. I want the steak. The people of the Liberties are tired of getting crumbs. We want the steak on the table now. We want a proper attitude to our area. And we want quality houses built. And we want them as soon as possible. And, and we need to be listened to. Like As I say, people, people are angry. People are losing hope. We've got to have a change of attitude towards the area. And, you know, more about, like, what do the local people actually need? Well, they need houses, they need a full-size pitch, and they need bricks for their kids to play on, you know, and to walk their dogs and stuff. OK, now, we have been in touch with uh, Dublin City Council, but as is fairly standard, um, we, we couldn't get a spokesperson to uh, talk about this. I know they will argue uh, that uh, this is a compromise and this is the best of uh, both worlds, and they need somewhere uh, to act as a depot in the immediate city centre. Well, the depot, it's the, look, I can understand that the depot needs to be consolidated, but it's the wrong location. Like, it needs to be on an industrial site. Um, you know, and that's really, that's like, I, I'm just a local mum. All I can say is we need a full-size sports pitch. We need quality housing. Like, it's, it's to the powers that be to, to select a better site, but it, it, it's the wrong site. OK, Absolutely stay there for one second, thing. because uh, one um, man who is planning to run for local election later this year for the Green Party for the South West Inner City, uh, who's supporting your campaign, is uh, Michael Pigeon. Michael, welcome to 98FM. Thanks for having me on, Adrian. Michael, if the uh, City Council don't locate their trucks and um, their gritters and all of uh, the, uh, those badly needed vehicles uh, in one central location, where else are they to put them? Well, actually, the plan is to have two central locations. At the moment, I think there's a little over 30 depots. And it's a good plan. The idea is to reduce it down to two. Um, our issue is just with the location of one of them. So this is the one that would serve the, the south side for the most part. Um, and the depot that would serve the north side is going to be placed uh, just, just out near Ikea. Now, we reckon that's a good site. There's lots of land there at the moment. It's uh, industrially zoned, as far as I understand. It's well connected with road, with big roads around it and that sort of thing. Whereas this site, in contrast, is in an area with very little land. It's got a, if you know the area yourself, uh, there's a lot of small lanes around there. Mm -hmm. They're already quite congested. And crucially, uh, there's, there's people around there who've been crying out for green space for decades. You know, I, I'm, I'm coming totally new to politics. I hadn't run for them before, no one in my family had. And I, and I looked around at, at some of the leaflets that have, been, that have been sent around for the past 20 years, and people have been talking about the need for green space, green space, pitches, that sort of thing, for the best part of 30 years. Um, so what we see here is a, is a large site, it's about seven or eight football pitches, um, or the equivalent of that, um, and, and it's council-owned. And it just feels like a real missed opportunity if the council were to use it to park lorries. OK, so on the north side, as you said, in, a, in an area that has quite a bit of land near Ikea, that's where um, trucks and so on from the north side will be stored. But on the south side, um, the plan is to store them around the Liberties area. And you're saying, no, they should be pushed out further. E either pushed out further or pushed out to a site with, 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 with greater transport links and without the demand for green space. So that could be and somewhere... And do, do you have any about. suggestions? Do you have anything in we're, mind? We're, we're having... There, there's, there's one site which might be possible, which is currently being used for construction works on Devitt Road. That's not a million... On Devitt Road, sorry, which isn't a million miles away. Um, but actually, we're having a public meeting in January where we're going to try and scope out two things. One, what, what could be done with this site in the Liberties? And two, where are alternative sites that could be used? You know, there are indus there's industrially zoned land in Bluebell, which isn't, which isn't that far away either. Um, you know, it's just a question of identifying a good site. Uh, we're not looking for a fight here, and I think, I think that Zoe made really reasonable points. We're just looking for a better place to live, um, and we're looking for the council to rethink and work with us to try okay, and Okay, uh, and, uh, and a better know? place to live includes, in a densely populated area, having some green space, having a pitch that, uh, that kids can play football on. And hurling exactly, and exactly, and and that's not a pipe dream. Like as I always said, there there are great sports teams in the area. Like Kevin's do 
uh, Kevin Turning Club, for example, that, you know, they win, they're brilliant, and they provide a huge opportunity, but they're being pushed even further out because the, the pitch they play on, uh, well, that, 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 that's closing down. So they're, 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 they're temporarily homeless at the moment. And it feels like, again, it's a real opportunity where they could be homed right in the area where, where, uh, from where they draw their team. Okay, Zoe, let me just come back to you uh, finally. You've set up an online petition uh, for people to sign. Uh, this is obviously for local people to sign. Where can we find that petition? Yeah, that's right. If you go to uplift.ie and then you just Google in Marabone Lane or Depot or any of the keywords and it will come up there. And we're up to about 900 now, so I'd be really thankful if people would um, sign the petition and then also I'll be emailing it from it to keep in touch with people with updates on the campaign and how it's going. Okay, so once again, that petition is where? Uplift.ie. Uplift. And if you go on to that site, that's a petition site, mm-hmm. so if you go on there and just look up Gepo or something like that and it will come up. Okay, or Liberty. Great. All right, I wish you the best of luck with your uh, campaign and like we said, uh, something that is badly needed for the area that uh, kids can actually get out and play instead of being stuck indoors, which is something we're all giving out about. Uh, we'll keep on top of that uh, campaign over the next couple of weeks. Now, um, thank you very much to both of you. Next on the programme, um, here's a story uh, I was a little bit shocked to read. Children aged nine are among the most troublesome Lewis passengers. Can you believe that? Children as young as nine years of age are among the main problems faced by mobile Lewis security teams combating antisocial behaviour. Now, we know uh, antisocial behaviour is a problem not only on the Lewis, but on all public transport. I I never thought it was uh, kids that young. I'm joined on the line by uh, Dublin Live and Irish Mirror reporter uh, Mark O'Brien, who's written a story about this. Uh, Mark, welcome to 98FM. Good morning, Edwin. How are you, Mark? Um, children as young as nine. Yeah, as young as as young as nine. Uh, apparently, causing um, I suppose I suppose in the report it kind of says they don't understand maybe how their behaviour is is affecting kind of the other passengers. They're you know they're getting on, they're boisterous, um, and just I suppose just sort of messing about really. Again, as young as between the age of nine and fifteen. Um, now, some, course, some would um, argue, Mark, that that sort of behaviour is just kids being kids. This is the thing when you when you look at the report, Adrian. I kind of you kind of would maybe think that as well. It could be, um, yeah, as you say. I mean, it, 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 it just strikes yeah, it just strikes me as uh, you know somewhat a little bit sensationalist to be argued, to be saying children age nine amongst most troublesome Lewis passengers, and I know that's what Transdev have said. Mm, well, um, that's what they said, you know. Yeah. Um, um, but, and they say that there's a particular problem on the Lewis line, on the Green Line, around Sandyford. Yeah, so after Sandyford, so from, I suppose, Sandyford, I think it goes on down towards kind of Leopardstown, Lockmanstown, that sort of area. And that seems to be where they're, they're uh, encountering particular problems. Now, uh, they say um, children between the ages of 9 and 15 can be the most troublesome group. They are loud and fearless and they don't understand that their behaviour is uh, upsetting others. Have uh, Trans have given any specific examples of, you know, stuff that would be classed as antisocial behaviour other than them being a little bit loud? Um, they they haven't, uh, basically, I suppose they have a breakdown of, of what the kind of general you know, antisocial behaviour is. Now, it does seem to be they break it down. It's, it's by and large, it's kind of public disorder or, or that kind of, again, as you say, kind of boisterous behaviour. Like, mm. it's like kind of, you know, the likes of more serious kind of things like assaults and, and, and that sort of maybe kind of, you know, racist abuse and that sort of thing. That's, uh, you know, there's not that much of that. It's more, as we say, the kind of, I suppose, maybe the less less serious, for want of a better word, um, kind of, you know, as you say, kind of boisterous behaviour or loud behaviour or just sort of, you know, obviously it's upsetting with the passengers, but it's at the lower end of the scale, I suppose, if you like. Yeah, because uh, obviously there have been, and I'm, I'm interested to read that there has been a, a decrease in the numbers of uh, mm. complaints about uh, behaviour on the Lewis, on both the red and the green lines. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there are still incidents. But the, it, it, what surprised me was the, the pulling of this headline, children aged nine are amongst the most troublesome. Um, there is a bigger problem with antisocial behaviour uh, with adults more than children. 
Um, well, I suppose it's just this is um, you would think so. I mean, I, I would imagine nine-year-olds aren't getting up to the more serious things. But again, this is what trans never saying is that the, the most kind of or the one of the most troublesome areas is, is kind of kids between the age of nine and fifteen. Okay, which, so if you, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprising. If you've kids aged yeah. between nine and fifteen, uh, tell them to basically stop acting the maggot on the loose. This is it. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Basically. Um, and again, and again, as it says, it says in the report there, and I think maybe that's it, maybe they don't understand, maybe they don't quite grasp that their behaviour is upsetting others or mm. kind of... Um, again, I don't want to say intimidating. I don't know if a nine-year-old can, can be that intimidating, yeah. You know, but uh, certainly upsetting or making it uncomfortable for others. And they look, again, there could be an, an issue of, look, maybe they don't realise that their behaviour is affecting others. When you're a kid that age, I suppose, do you sometimes? You know, as a kid that age, sometimes have to be told, look, this isn't acceptable. This That sort of behaviour isn't acceptable. You need to calm down and not be doing whatever it is you're doing, you know? Mm. All right, uh, Mark O'Brien, uh, reporter for the Irish Mayor in Dublin Live. Thanks very much indeed for uh, joining us on 98FM. I just, uh, the reason I wanted to mention it is I just think it was a bit of a sensationalist story. Yes, obviously, uh, kids act the maggot on uh, public transport and shouldn't be acting the maggot on public transport. But for um, TransDev to kind of highlight that, um, there were 999, 998 incidents reported on Lewis trams between January and the uh, end of October, ranging from disorderly behaviour to assault. But they do have a problem with kids, and the kids are particularly problematic around Sandyford. So um, if you have kids that hop on the Lewis, will you ask them just to behave themselves, please? Thanks. It's 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. And after the break, I want you to share with me your Christmas party embarrassing stories. We have our Christmas party tonight. And the, there was a time at Christmas parties I'd have made a gobshite of myself. I'm a, a little bit more mature now and tend to behave myself a little bit better than I would have in the past. Well, that's me saying that now. <laughs> Let's see what happens tonight. But anyway, um, we all, uh, we enjoy our Christmas parties, but invariably something happens that is either embarrassing or that everybody in the office is talking about for the next couple of days. And it might be just whispers. Did you see what so-and-so did? Um, and he, maybe you've a colleague that you were, weren't able to ever look in the face again after the Christmas party. I would love to hear your Christmas party embarrassing stories from years gone by. Or maybe even from this year. Text or WhatsApp 0877 989898. Better still, call us on 6797 981. And every caller that's on the air in the next while uh, will go into a draw for a pair of passes for IMC Cinemas just to hear your juicy, gossipy stories. Obviously, no names. If you know what I mean? Even if it was years ago, you could still embarrass the person. So no names. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 98 FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher for beds, flooring and more. 98 FM. In a little while, uh, we will have uh, Good News Friday where we... Um, uh, well, we love, we love Good News Friday. And in fact, uh, we will have uh, Little Dixon on the line. Um, and starting next week, or starting in January, we're going to be doing a new thing where we're going to ask you to get your kids to give us uh, good news stories. You'll hear uh, what our uh, Jeremy's young fellow uh, has done for today. And after uh, Christmas, we are going to ask you to submit your child's good news stories um, in the new year. Okay. Now, um, it's Christmas party season. We have our party tonight, and um, I'm going to be a really good boy. I'm going to be home nice and early. At least I'm saying that now. We'll see what happens. But anyway, um, I want to hear from you. The Christmas party is a, a time where somebody invariably uh, makes an absolute fool of themselves. Would you agree? 
because we've all had it happen to us. Uh, we've all made a fool of ourselves at one stage or another um, at a Christmas party. And I would like to hear your embarrassing stories of uh, things that have happened at Christmas parties. It could be you. It could be uh, a colleague. And if you're talking about somebody else, we don't want them named, obviously. Text or WhatsApp 0877 989898. I would love to hear your embarrassing uh, Christmas stories. Now, I'd one here, where is it? Oh, yeah, okay, here, uh, here it is. I got too drunk at a Christmas party and I had a fight with my boss over a crap pay increase. He was drunk too and got angry too and it ended up getting a bit physical. The next work day, though, he called me into his office and had a chat. I thought he was going to fire me. But after a conversation I don't have enough room for here, he offered me a two grand additional pay increase, so it was worth it in the end. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the uh, Christmas party is the worst place to have a conversation about pay increases. (laughs) <laughs> Call me right now on 67979891. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. 9898 I want to uh, hear your um, stories of things that happened at the Christmas party. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. And I have a pair of passes for IMC Cinemas to give away uh, to some lucky caller in the next half hour. Stephen, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Stephen? Good, Adrian, and a Merry Christmas to you. And the same to you, Stephen. We've got our Christmas party tonight. Like I said, I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to behave myself. I'm going to be on the last bus. At least, yeah, well, I'm, at least I'm saying that now. Yeah, yeah, um, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, for you, Adrian. Yeah, go on. Um, about 18 years ago, um, we had a party in, I think it was just off Dame Street there, I can't remember the place we were in, but uh, one of the lads took a shine to me partner's uh, wife, oh, not his wife, uh, his sister. So you say that again, one of, one of your... Partners. Yeah. Partners, uh, one of the lads that works for us yeah. took a shine to his sister. Right. And he was having none of it, okay, but he kept that, it, kept that, it, kept that. So it got a bit nasty near the end of the night and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we sorted it out. It calmed down a bit. Next of all, the two of them were missing. So it was coming to the end of the night. We went out onto Dame Street and the two of them were getting loaded into a Black Mariah into Pear Street. There was murder on Dame Street. The two of them were battering each other. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, straight up. Yeah, murder. And there hasn't been a, a fast way party ever since. <laughs> My God almighty. So they ended up killing each other uh, over one taking a shine to the other sister. That's it, yeah. Something simple. Now, the, your man said to both of them still walk out, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, touch and go for a while. And do they, get uh, on, do they get on? Yeah, well, now they do, yeah. But uh, I'd say it's quite fresh in both of them. Went. Now, the, my partner was saying that it was straight away, but the, the fellow that drives for us, he was kept there all night. Oh, really? He was kept in the cell all night? Yeah, he was kept there till late the next morning, but uh, he partner got out straight away, more or less. Wouldn't you be absolutely scarlet if you ended up in uh, in a cell as a result of your Christmas party? Uh, uh, can you imagine sitting there thinking to yourself, what, what have we done? And uh, w- did the bosses go mad over it? Oh, well, we had it, the three of us had a chat with him on Monday morning, and it was grand. Like, uh, uh, like the chap's walk is... Uh, uh, it's, it's foolish, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be mad to sack him, you know? But all of a sudden, stupid, but nothing's ever happened since. It just uh, People aren't able, uh, uh, men particularly, aren't able. Uh, to cope with somebody saying anything about their sister or showing any sort of affection towards their sister or anything like that? Well, he got, he got very uh, uh, like that, and then, of course, your man was going mad because he was re- rejected, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Keep your stories coming in. I'd love to hear from you. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 989898. 0877 here's a Here's a story here. Uh, after an incident a few years ago, the company my friend works for no longer holds Christmas parties. It's a small chain of three shops and the owner was having an affair with one of the shop managers. 
At the Christmas party, her husband saw him putting his hand up her skirt and a fight started. One of the men got a black eye and one got his thumb badly bitten. One couple divorced. One is still together, but the affair is still going on. Apparently, they uh, used the offices at the workplace for it. <laughs> and um, here's another one. And this is embarrassing because uh, how many of us have done something like this? One year at our party, the relatively new lady was well behaved at first. As the night went on, she started to get drunk. She was flirting with all the men and trying to dance up really close to them, even the married boss who came over from America. The night wore on some more. She ended up falling on the dance floor and wetting herself. Now, I, I, it did happen to me once. I did fall, uh, leaving a particular premises one night. And um, apparently Jeremy has a picture of of this, of me falling. Now, I might have been a little the worse for wear, but Jeremy being Jeremy, he uh, decided to uh, take a photograph of it. I'll never forget that, actually. I'll never forgive him for that. Um, text or WhatsApp 0877 987 I would love to hear your stories um, that have ha- things that have happened at uh, Christmas parties. 0877 989898. We'll take a quick break and we'll take a couple more calls in just a moment. 98 FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM. A couple more of your uh, stories. Wait till you get a load of this. Um, This happened a couple of years ago. These are all uh, things that happened at the Christmas party. This happened a couple of years ago. An arrogant colleague was showing off how much weight she'd lost. Everyone was complimenting her. I had a few drinks on me. I was meant to merely mumble, but instead I stated so that all could hear, shame you still have an ugly face. The room went quiet. And she ran off crying. Oh, dear, 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 dear. It was my Christmas party last weekend with a free bar and food, but I got sick all over my boss's jacket and everyone was blaming the drink, but I blamed uh, the food, says uh, that message. And uh, do, 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 do. One more. A lad I worked with uh, cheated on his girlfriend at the Christmas party two years ago. Anyway, next morning he was in the shower and he got a text from the girl he had kissed the night before. And his girlfriend read the message and then called the girl and asked her what happened. The girl told her they were kissing each other all night. So anyway, the girlfriend dumped him there and then. He cried his eyes out to me in work, but it was his own fault for cheating and it wasn't the first time that he'd done it to her. Uh, I can't come on air... Because he's beside me, <laughs> says uh, says that message. If you are going to your uh, party tonight or over the weekend or maybe even next weekend or maybe you've been uh, to it already, just beware that uh, we all sober up and everybody likes a story to tell from the Christmas party, so... Be careful. Watch yourself. It's 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And this is Adrian Kennedy with you until midday today. Time for Good News Friday. Now, Good News Friday is where we ask you to share with us something good that is happening in your world. And that's why we call it Good News Friday. Now, this can be the most trivial little story ever, or it can be the most important thing in your world. Either way, we want you to share it with us. Text or WhatsApp 0877 989898. 0877 989898. We want to hear from you your good news story. And as I said a while ago, everybody who's on the air in this half hour uh, is in a draw for uh, a set of cinema passes from IMC Cinemas. So if you have a good news story that you'd like to share with us, you can text or WhatsApp. 0877 989898 0877 989898 Just whatever it is that is going on in your world that is good news we would love to hear from you Text or WhatsApp 0877 989898 
What is your good news story? Now, every Friday, we like to bring you uh, good news stories from um, a young man called Luke Dixon, which is uh, Jeremy's young fella. And uh, Luke likes to... And he likes to tell us what's going on in his world. And every Friday, he contacts us and lets us know what his good news story is. Over to you, Luke. Oh, hang on. Is he on the line? Luke, are you there? Hey, guys. It's Luke here. It's my good news Friday is that I got a parcel from Connecticut. Or the Christmas parcel filled with goodies. Inside the parcel, there was cookies, a candy cane filled with Hershey's Kisses. There's lots of other Christmas presents that I can't open yet, but I might sneak a peek when my mama and daddy is, aren't looking. I have a secret, I have a secret. <laughs> Last night, daddy ate um, 15 cookies. He's like the cookie monster. I think I heard him saying, cookie, cookie, cookie. <laughs> Guys, can I sing you a quick Christmas song before I go? Okay. Come on. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. A Happy New Year. <laughs> Bye, guys. Remember to phone Katie and Jamie now. Call 6797981. Oh, I love it. That puts a smile on my face every Friday. That's uh, Jeremy's young fella, Little Luke, uh, with his good news. He got a package from Connecticut in the United States. I would like to hear from you your good news stories. Um, this is... The smallest little thing that's going on in your world that you want to uh, share with us. Okay? So whatever it is uh, that is your good news, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can text or WhatsApp 0877 98, 98, 98 and share with us your good news stories. We call this Good News Friday. Danielle, you're on 98FM. How are you, Danielle? Hey, yeah. Welcome to Dublin Talks. Thank you very much. Danielle, what is your good news this Friday? I had a party planned for my 11 year old birthday. And she never really has a party with friends because it's just. She hasn't got many friends. Right. So she decided this year that she was going to have friends and she sent her all of her patients. And the party tomorrow, but by yesterday, nobody has gone back. Yeah. So I had to have the conversation with her that. Sorry, it's not going to happen. So she was extremely upset. All oh, no. And we decided to cancel the party, but we woke up this morning and we got texts. Oh, sorry, I'm finding it very hard to hear you, Danielle. You're very bad signal on your phone. Yeah. 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 Um, no, she got two texts this morning and said a few people were torn up, so she's very happy this morning on a skill. Okay. No more tears. No more tears. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, so where, where's the party on? In the house, having a fortnight tournament. All right, very good. Um, and this is her very first birthday party. Yeah, very first birthday party with friends. Usually we do cousins or we family day or something like that because it's just never going to happen with friends kind of thing. But mm. this year she wants it, she insisted on it and it looks like it's going to happen now so she's... Yeah, that's happy. great. That's fantastic. I hope she has a great party, and I hope you get even more replies today uh, from <laughs> yeah, people from people who are who are going to go to the party. It's so it's such a difficult thing for a parent to have to look at. Uh, yeah, to see she her. has additional needs, and they're not physical, they're mental. So it's she's not accepted very well. Mm. If they were more physical, people could see them and say, "Oh, that's what it is." But yeah, it's tougher. But yeah, very happy tomorrow. All oh, right, but that's that's good news, and uh, I've, I've made fingers crossed that she has a great party tomorrow. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Danielle, thank you very much indeed. What is your good news story? Text or WhatsApp 0877 987 Actually, uh, talking about good news, I, <laughs> I mentioned a message that we got uh, a couple of minutes ago. Um, I was at the party last weekend. I got sick all over my boss's jacket. Everyone was blaming the drink, but I blamed the food. And then that same person sent a follow-on message, which says, My Good News Friday is... 
I still got my Christmas bonus after the getting sick incident at the Christmas party, which is good to hear. Um, what is your good news story? Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. And it can be literally anything, but something that in your world is good news. Terry, what is your good news this Friday? The good news is I get 10 or 11 days off over Christmas instead of the normal two that I used to get in my oh. previous work. Oh, really? Yes. How nice. So when are you... So you used to only get two days off over Christmas? Yeah, I was a bread man, so I only had Christmas Day and Stephen's Day off. And Because everybody needs bread. That's it. Everybody needs bread, even on... Uh, the, well, we even need it on Stephen's Day, but we'll give you that day off. Uh, so what are you working at this year that you have the whole Christmas off? Now I deliver for Rose Confectionery, so we're off from next Friday till the 2nd. <sighs> Isn't that just great? And as yep. a matter of interest, some companies make you, some companies don't. Do you have to keep any holiday days? Yes. You do. How many holiday days do you have to keep? Four. Four. Which is no problem if you, you don't mind that if you no. if you actually um, have the time off. So you're off from next Friday, the, the whole week. Now, I have to say, I'm off the same length of time, which I'm delighted about. Um, next Friday is our last show of the year, and then we're off until the 2nd of January. It's a lovely break, isn't it? It is, yes. And any plans? Um, no, not really. Just relax. And it, I, I should imagine that for all those years that you got like two days off over Christmas, you looked with envy at everybody else who was off for the whole of Christmas. Oh yes, especially when they're uh, when they're tucking into points of beer. Yeah, yeah, nothing worse. And you're there, just <laughs> oh, we like to go to work. All right, Terry, <laughs> yeah. I'm delighted for you. Enjoy your uh, time off over Christmas. All right, thanks very much. Keep your messages coming in to 0877 98 98 98. What is your good news story? Um, and it, because it, it can be anything, but in your world, it is uh, good news. I'd love to hear from you. Um, you can text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98, 98, 98. Now, where am I going? Dan, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Dan? Hello, sir. Uh, good, Dan. Uh, welcome to 98 FM. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. I'm, I'm nearly in the Christmas spirit. Nearly. I'm not, I'm not quite there, but I'm not far off. Dan, what is your good news story this Friday? Uh, I asked me lady a love the money when she said yeah. Say that again, you what? I asked me lady that I love to money me. She said, "Yeah." Ah, did she really? Yeah, she did. Of course, she did. How long are you? How long are you together? Over three years. Over three years. Yeah. And you finally decided to pop the question. I had to get the yellow there. The, the, the balls of steel out of you eventually, <laughs> didn't I? And uh, come here. Were, were you nervous about it? No, I wasn't. You imagine? Had you discussed it beforehand? Well, the the room was on the wall. If you know what I mean. Say that again. The writing was on the wall. The writing was on the wall, okay. Uh, so you, uh, you you finally popped the question. When did you do this? Last weekend. Last weekend. And tell me how you did it. How? How, yeah. We were having a bit of grub and we were feeling all love. So I just said, come on, Chuck, will you marry me? And she said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you're a real romantic, Dan. So she stuck with me, man. <laughs> you're a real romantic. <laughs> That's a great story. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, d despite your your romance, uh, she said yes. Oh, she did. She had to. So, have you any plans? Any idea when it's going to be? Or what's the story there? Uh, we'll be looking at it for the next couple of months. And anyway, baby steps from here. And anyway, baby steps, right? Are we talking <laughs> next year, the year after? Hopefully next year. Hopefully get next a few year. to get her, hopefully. All right, well, that, that, that's fantastic. Congratulations. I'm delighted she said yes. And I know there are loads of women listening to us right now who are envious at the way in which you propose. Oh, to should be. All the blokes should be getting in the Christmas spirit of getting down on Monday and getting a nice rock out of fucking time. But they don't mean to be on our bed, you will it? <laughs> well, you're some romantic. Thanks, Dan. <laughs>
<laughs> Keep your messages coming in to 0877 98, 98, 98 Our good news is our little boy who is five and has autism has finally taken an interest in Christmas. After five years of wishing for it, our Christmas wish has come true. Uh, I can't ask for anything more and that is from Kelly and Craig. That is fantastic news. What is your good news? Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. Uh, and good news can literally be anything. Valerie, you're on 98 FM. Hi, you, Valerie. Hi, how are you? Valerie, how are you? <laughs> what is your good news? My son is coming home from Vancouver. And how long has he been in Vancouver? When did you last see him? Since May. Oh, he's been over there since May? May, yeah. And is he, is he going back or is he coming home for good? Hopefully not. I'm home to keep him home. <laughs> uh, has he said what he's doing? No, he's coming home and he makes up his mind in January. Oh, right. So he hasn't decided. Has he got a job over there? He has, yeah. And how's he getting on? He loves it. He loves it? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, he loves it. But what, so why wouldn't he go back? Because um, his mammy doesn't, too much. Because <laughs> his mammy doesn't want him to. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you see, if, he, if he's getting on great and if he has a good job and all of that, you kind of, you have to wish uh, him well, yeah. don't you? Oh, you do? We still want him back home? <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's such a small world. I'm sure you see him or talk to him at least every day or every second day, do you? Oh, I do. It's not the same, but... Is it not? No. Because <laughs> the reason I say that is, my young fellow was in uh, Canada also for um, the goods of a year, and when he came home... It was like as if he hadn't been away because I talked to him so frequently face to face when he was over there. Ah, uh, no, I still want him home. <laughs> you still want him home, okay. Well, imagine how mammies and daddies felt like in the 40s and they got a letter every three months. That was the only communication. Oh, I had. know, I know. Mm. All right, that's great Thank news. Uh, Thank Valerie, you very much. Have a great Christmas. And uh, one last. Oh, hang on, we've one just coming in on that line there. My good news is I still had holidays left, so I took yesterday and today off work. Uh, says uh, that message um, my good news for today is I made it uh, to come to school on time today and tomorrow I'm going to, uh, to Munich to spend my weekend I made it to come to school I don't really get that uh, but anyway going to Munich for the weekend um, and is there one more here oh yeah sorry here it is my good news is that my daughter has lost weight and I brought her to Dundrum last week to buy her clothes from Santa and for the first time in four years she can wear uh, clothes from a brand that she particularly likes gone from size 16 to size 12 I'm so proud and finally Bobby what is your good news I finally got a full-time job on my boss after a year of volunteering at a home business. Now, Bobby, I'm just being told in my ear here that we uh, used to speak to you in the past about being homeless. Yes, you did. Fan Several times. Fantastic. That is brilliant. So you've got a full-time job after a year of volunteer work. Yep. I, I'm, I'm delighted for you, Bobby. Well, so am I. It's been a long road. I am absolutely chuffed for you. Uh, that is great news. Uh, so, life is looking up. Things are getting yeah. better. From when you started that show four years ago, to me sleeping in a doorway, to me having my own place and walking full time. In fact, I remember speaking to you from a doorway, Bobby. Yeah, and if you remember a certain person that wished me dead in the doorway. Yes, I do. Well, you're not, and you've um, uh, bounced back. Um, oh, yeah. I assume you've somewhere to live and everything now, Bobby. I, I do indeed. And and a and a full time job. That is yeah, a well, great I, way to wrap up Good News Friday. I'm delighted for you, Bobby. Well, I just want to let everyone who is stuck in a bad position, whether it be a hotel room or a doorway, it can be done. It just takes hard work. Brilliant. That is great news. Well done, Bobby. Congratulations. Merry Christmas, and same to you. Ah, what a great way to end Good News Friday. And uh, that guy, when we started this, as he said, when we started this program five years ago, he was one of the people we regularly spoke to about literally sleeping rough on the streets and now he's got a full-time job. That is brilliant. Now, on the way after the break, if you have young kids around the house, I would ask you to turn off the radio because of the conversation that we are going to have. We will not be fielding any complaints. It's a conversation we want to have, uh, but young children of Santa years should not listen to it. So if you have young children of Santa years, please take them away from the radio. We're back in a second. 
Live and exclusive to Dublin's 98FM, Monday through Friday between 10 and midday. This is Adrian Kennedy. You're with 98FM's Dublin Talks. And Trish is here with Friday's top headlines. Thanks, Adrian. Heavy rain forecast for tomorrow is set to disrupt Christmas shopping in the city centre. Met Aaron has issued a yellow warning for the entire country and says there's potential for severe weather with heavy rain and wind. Some doctors and hospitals say they're unlikely to be ready to provide abortions in January. The Oireachtas passed all stages of the new law after a vote in the Shannon last night. It means abortion will be legal in Ireland from January 1st. Supports are available for families who are struggling to find rented accommodation. That's the message from one Dublin TD who says many people are being advised not to join the HAP scheme to boost their chances of social housing. It comes amid reports some families are choosing to stay in emergency accommodation rather than find a rented property. And a Love Island Christmas special will be broadcast over the festive season. The reunion will air on Virgin Media 2 on December 17th at 9pm. Caroline Flack will reunite with 19 of the Islanders to see how they're getting on six months later. And now you're up to date on 98. 98. 98 FM. Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. It's Friday morning. I hope everything is good in your world. I'm Adrian Kennedy. And between now and midday today, this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. The mid-morning talk and phone-in show for Dublin, by Dublin and about Dublin. Now, we are about to have a conversation about something that we feel important to have, but I am issuing a warning that if you have children of Santa years, please turn off the radio because we do not want them to hear this conversation. Please take them out of the room. Uh, We are not going to uh, deal with or accept complaints about this conversation, okay? Uh, This is an important conversation to have and uh, this is the third time I've issued this warning. If you have children uh, of uh, Santa years, please turn off the radio or take them out of the room uh, because of the conversation that we are about to have. Okay, so please don't say you weren't warned. Uh, We have done as much as we possibly can uh, to uh, warn you. Okay, now, the most magical part of Christmas for children is waking up on Christmas morning, running down the stairs to open the presents that Santa Claus left out while they were asleep. But what happens when Santa brings more extravagant gifts to families who are a little bit more comfortable financially? Is it fair that some children might get top-of-the-range iPads or laptops or shiny new bikes, while other children get less showy gifts? One Facebook user has put a post that has gone viral this very week over this issue, and she has divided a lot of opinion uh, with her message. Again, if you've children of uh, Santa years, I would ask you to turn off the radio uh, because of the conversation that we're about to have. Have a listen to this uh, post that has been seen by countless thousands around the world, actually. I can't stress this enough, says this post. Stop telling your, your children, sorry, your Santa age kids that their iPads, their iPhones or their uh, bikes Uh, and 200 euro toys are from Santa. Some families can't afford that. Little kids wonder why they got socks or a coat or more basic toys from Santa when other kids got an elaborate gift like uh, an iPad. This is the second year that I've had a parent cry to me telling me that their kid asked if they weren't good enough or if Santa didn't like them as much. It breaks my heart for the parents and the kids. And this poster went on to say, so you take credit for the gift. Santa didn't buy that iPad. Mammy did or Daddy did. Leave the less expensive gifts from Santa. Be blessed you can afford what others can't. And this gathered a very mixed reaction online. And basically what she's getting at is that Santa should only bring, you know, small enough stuff that most people can afford. And if you're giving more elaborate gifts like bikes or iPads or whatever, computers or whatever, those gifts come from mammy or daddy. But 
that Santa brings the smaller stuff so that all kids are treated equally. I can remember as a kid, and I actually remember this vividly, uh, one year uh, we in our house all got bikes and we were all thrilled. But my friend who lived across the road got a Monopoly set or something like that, but something very, very small. And he was devastated that the Kennedys got bikes and he got a Monopoly set. And he couldn't understand it. And I remembered like it was yesterday. I would love to hear from you on this. On 6797981, you can uh, text or WhatsApp 0877989898. Let me read some of the comments uh, to this woman's post uh, from online. I am a mom of five kids and I've always let my kids believe that all gifts are from Santa. It's the magic of Christmas. Your financial situation is not my problem. Oh. Another wrote, I will tell my kids what I damn well want. Our family Santa, uh, our family Santa gets the kids everything because my sisters, their husbands, my hubby and I uh, aren't that desperate for the recognition of buying the most expensive gifts. I don't tell others to give all their gifts from Santa as I don't expect anyone to tell me whom to give my gifts from. Merry Christmas, you present Nazi. <laughs> It was a dig at that person who put the post up. And then one more. Yes, my kids asked me about this a few years ago when I couldn't even afford uh, to buy anything. I ended up telling them that I asked Santa to only fill uh, our stockings because we have so much love in our home and from our family and friends and we didn't expect or need expensive gifts. Unfortunately, my children made a jump of logic and came to the conclusion that children who get uh, expensive toys from Santa are less loved, which is the exact opposite. I would love to hear from you on 6797981. You can text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. Should Santa have like a, a limit, a value limit, let's say 200 euro, that he doesn't leave gifts worth more than 200 euro uh, for any child. And that way, kids don't feel excluded. And if kids are getting nice, nicer presents, like bikes or computers or whatever, uh, Playstations or whatever, gifts that are more expensive that not everybody can afford, should those gifts come from Mammy and Daddy? That's the conversation I want to have with you on 67979981. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. And one more time, I am going to say, if you have children of Santa years uh, with you now and they can hear this, I would ask you to turn off the radio. Okay, because we will not be feeling any complaints to do with uh, this conversation because we have issued as many warnings as we possibly can. Uh, because you'd be amazed at the way people complain over this issue. Clive, you're on 98FM. How are you, Clive? Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Clive. Clive, Santa should have an upper price limit range uh, above which he doesn't give gifts. What do you think of that? No, I'm guessing this woman is kind of... Um doesn't have as much money as other people. I think this is just jealousy. Well, no, it's, it's, not that she, people... it's not that she doesn't, but she has spoken to other parents uh, who... And here's what she said. This is the second year that I've had a parent cry to me telling me that their kid asked if they weren't good enough or if Santa didn't like them as much. That's just an anecdotal story. That could be just made up that she's trying to prove her point. Well, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Clive, I can tell you from my own personal experience when I was a kid, when we in our house all got lovely gifts one year and our neighbour got SFA, he could not, he was inconsolable. He couldn't understand this, how Santa couldn't leave a bike in his house as well. Yeah, but, you know, it's a free society. If the, the parents of the children want to spend that money on their children... They're free to do so, you know? No, but, but but the conversation is about Santa and should he have a price limit on what he brings? And, you know, should we as adults agree what that price limit is? Well, no, because that's, that's almost like a form of socialism in a way. I mean, look, you know, it's the parent's choice. So, no, because, you know, it's, it's free choice. They're, you know, just because... Let's say somebody's worked hard for something and they can afford to indulge their child... Well, you know, they shouldn't have to 
you know, placate somebody who's on social welfare who can't afford it. Who hasn't so how, OK, but how do you explain to that child whose mum and dad having a pot to you know what in uh, that Santa couldn't afford to buy you the uh, PlayStation that your mate who lives down the road got? How do you explain that to a kid? Well, look, well, that's, I find a lot of that, I mean, we can go back to your day where maybe you, there wasn't as much, but, you know, today it's all about image and wealth and we all know that people, parents will pay, will buy those things for their kids, you know, where they have to take out loans or whatever. So I don't believe that, you know, kids are getting SFAs, you say, um, but I, I don't know, but I mean, like, it's just, <clears throat> it's just to me what you read out there just reeks of jealousy that she can't afford it and she wants you know, other people to be in the same boat as her, but it's, you know... No, but, 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 but Clive, hang on. The, the argument here is, it's not that you, uh, you shouldn't be a, a, able to spoil your child if you have the money. That's fine, do what you want. But don't have all the gifts coming from Santa because that's where the problem is. That, and the example I gave, in our house, Santa was able to give the three of us bikes. Across the road, the kids got a Monopoly set. All right. Well, that's your choice. Yeah, you can say all right. If you can say it came from Santa, or there's an op- you can do that if you want. But it's it's you know it's their choice. If they want to say it came from Santa, that that's it. You know. So you don't really care then uh, how the kids, and I'm talking about the kids, feel when Santa doesn't give them as nice a gift as the next door neighbor's got. Well, it's not that I, I don't care. You know, it's but like. They, fine. If, if the kids, if the parents want to do that, you know, it's their choice. I mean, like. You know, whatever. You know, it's it's. Can you hear me? But uh, but this will only ever work if we all kind of agree to this. And this may yeah. seem like a, a bizarrely hypothetical uh, situation, yeah, it but, it, way, yeah. but it's not. That's the problem, because kids genuinely feel, kids who don't have as much as the kids next door, genuinely feel that Santa doesn't like them as much. Yeah, but I think you're looking through this from the, from the lens of your childhood when maybe there wasn't so much money and people didn't spend that. It wasn't so commercialized. But today, I don't think it's that situation. You know, we know even if they have to go to a you know a lender to get money, parents are going to splash out. I mean, that's I don't believe that that they're you know getting an apple or or you know whatever. It's kids are being lavished with expensive gifts. So I. But don't... why why can't those expensive gifts come from mammy and daddy? So, in other words, if because, little, it's if little, the, the, because this is when they're young and they enjoy the mystique of looking at Santa, and it's this is, um, I suppose, the, the parents live through the, par- the the children's eyes and they see the the mystique and the wonder and the magic and and you know the, the belief and, and and that sort of um, that hopefulness that as they get older will disappear. So they want to kind of they want to just enjoy that. The parents want to just relish that and enjoy that. That, that wonderful kind of the awe and that, that Santa could do this for them. That's what that's the enjoyment. That's the enjoyment that the parents get. It's not about the the actual thing. It's the enjoyment that the seeing that their children filled with wonder and, and getting yeah, this. Yeah, um, look, I get all that. I completely understand all that. Um, I think we all probably remember ourselves as kids going downstairs and uh, seeing what he left was like amazing um but why should he be more generous in one house than another katrina you're on 98 fm hi katrina morning Aiden. good morning katrina how are you katrina that message um from that lady do you agree with what she's saying i do in a way it's the way i brought my kids up um i think i, I mean like I don't, I don't disagree with people wanting to spend their money, but I do disagree with the pressure that is put on parents to go to lenders to get their kids whatever they want. I just don't understand why would you do that? Like, it's not, you're repaying something for a whole entire year that a child might actually only play with for a week. And let's face the facts, I've got four kids. I know what Santa does and I know the way it is in the house. My kids have always been brought up in a way that if you want something like a Nintendo DS or an Xbox or anything like that, you save your money. Or you save your money and Mammy and Daddy will put some money towards it. But Santa does not buy you anything like that. I have a very, very... But it, it, and that's all well and good, Katrina, and that's great to, to hear mind. that. But then when they hear from their mates, oh, Santa bought, brought me this iPad, look. <clears throat> oh, this is still a Christmas present, isn't it? So my kids see it as, well, they got that as a Christmas present, but I'm saving my money to get that if that's what I want. They're not, not getting what they So, you know, they, I tell my kids they can ask for 10 things. They can write 10 things down on their list. And 
you know, don't go over a hundred euro mark in one gift. But if you ask for something that's like 80, 90 euro, you're not going to get your 10 gifts. So if you want, you know, like I'm making my kids think about this. Christmas is not all about presents. And my kids appreciate Christmas that our family comes together. And that's and that's the, the idea of Christmas, is family coming together. I grew up in a foreign country. I know exactly what, uh, we didn't have Christmas over there. So I know that Christmas is a special occasion. I believe in Santa. I always believe in Santa. It's not, you know, I believe that kids should believe in Santa. It's not that I don't believe in it or don't want the kids to believe in it. I think that there's this whole society of, we didn't have a grown up, so I'm going to make sure that my little child, my little John, Johnny is going to get the Xbox, uh, even though he has the PS4 there. I'm going to get him the Xbox one this year because he put it on the Santa list. I can't afford it, so I'm going to go to a lender and I'm still going to write Santa on it. Now, I don't but sadly, it was sadly, that thought. is what happens I because know, I don't think the pressure should be there on parents. But the, but the pressure, the, the pressure, Katrina, is brought on by ourselves oh, by yes, uh, by allowing Adam Santa did. to bring expensive yeah. gifts to one house oh, and not to the next house. But they, I mean, like my my children, I, I, the way my children say it is, two years ago, they, um, mommy and daddy bought them tablets for Christmas. They were still Christmas presents. They were left under the Christmas tree. The kids appreciated them. Mm-hmm. They had them for because we were going on a special holiday that that next summer. So we, I said, you know what, I must go, and I could afford them at the time. There's years where I can't afford things. And I got them the tablets, and they, they got them from Mammy and Daddy, and they still got their Christmas presents from Santa. And, you know, it wasn't that I took away from Christmas at all, and it wasn't that that this present actually topped off. You know, it was better than everything else that they got from Santa. Like, my youngest is uh, into this generation, doll, my generation doll thing and the LOLs and all of that. My two boys have always been into Lego and games and stuff like that. Mm. My eldest is going to be 18 this year. So I have a huge age gap between my youngest and my eldest. And my youngest turned around two years ago and said, well, Santa doesn't come to the, the oldest anymore because, you know, they're over 16. So, you know, Santa doesn't come. And she made this decision, her, you know, this conclusion herself. Mm. This wasn't brought on by me at all. So how do I, how do I get around? It's like, right, okay. She's always known about the parents thing. She's always known about the Santa thing. I just think the pressure should not be put on parents. If they can't afford it, they can't afford it. Why let other people pressurize? But, but as I said, yeah, that, that, that pressure on, on parents who can't afford is coming from other parents, other parents who allow Santa to bring whatever they want. So you explain to your child, if you're in, like, I, I, I don't see what the harm is in, in explaining to your children, right, you can ask for 10 things. If you ask over a certain limit, you, you know, the pr- presents go down. That is going to be under the Christmas tree. Santa has billions of kids. Okay, so uh, so, uh, so should we from. have a Santa limit? Should we have I don't a? Don't see a problem in that. Okay, because then you know may, maybe Mammy and well, Daddy couldn't the, afford to buy nice parents. presents. But that's up to the parents to make that decision. But, it, but no, you see, it, it only works if we all agree. That's the problem. Uh, in fact, Laura, I'm going to talk to you straight after the break. Um, Santa brings your kids whatever your kids want. Exactly, it's only one day a year. Okay, stay there for one second. I'll talk to you straight after the break. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM. We're in the middle of a conversation that we do not want uh, children of Santa years listening to. So if you have children with you, uh, right now, who are of Santa age, I would ask you to take them out of the room or turn off the radio, please. Okay, you have been warned. I've issued several warnings because it's a conversation we're having that we don't want kids of Santa years to listen to. And uh, if you could please take them away from the radio, we'd be very grateful. We will not be entertaining any complaints with regard to this conversation. So uh, please do that right now. Now, we're in the middle of a conversation all to do with a message that has gone viral on uh, social media. And it says, I can't stress this enough. Stop telling your Santa age kids that their iPads or their iPhones or their bikes or their 200 euro toys are from Santa. Some families can't afford that. Little kids wonder why they got socks or a coat or more basic toys from Santa when all the other kids got decent gear. 
This is the second year I have had a parent cry telling me that their kid asked if they weren't good enough or if Santa didn't like them as much. It breaks my heart for the parents and for the kids. So you take the credit for the gift. Santa didn't buy that iPad or that bike. Mammy did or Daddy did. Leave the less expensive gifts to Santa. Be blessed you can afford what others can't. And as we've heard, you know, and every year we talk about this, about people getting themselves into chronic debt with uh, money lenders just so that Santa can bring the kids the best of gear. Um, This message says, um, it's not nice seeing other kids with better toys at Christmas, but I always appreciated what I got. Unfortunately, kids need to learn that life is unfair. And in fact, Alan, that was your message uh, that I just read out. Um, yeah. yeah, life is unfair and, you know, you mightn't have the, uh, the stuff your friends have or whatever. But when it comes from Santa, why would Santa choose to give child A a decent present and child B not so decent? Yeah, look, I, I used to understand, I think that myself when I was a kid, like you were saying, there was always one kid on the street that would have the new bike and the best of things and I'd have my G.I. Joe's or Studio and like I said, I was happy with that. But just, it's not just, just I just mean, in general, the kids just need to learn life isn't fair. Like it's, I'll just look on the own niece and maybe they'll love them, but I ain't going to worry as well because I'm thinking 10, 20 years, what is it going to be like? And they, they won't have to do anything. They just need to learn that life isn't fair at times. Mm. Like I'm a grown up, I'm 35, life, throw stuff at you all the time like, Okay, but, uh, so how do you explain and I, like I said I remember this vividly so we, we in the Kennedy house all got bikes and a friend across the road who wanted a bike who had asked for a bike got a monopoly set how do you explain yeah. to a kid that those children there got it and you didn't when it's coming from the same person absolutely but then how, how do you explain to the other kid who got maybe a I don't know, a stick of rock or something because that's all his family can afford compared to the monopoly set. There's always going to be a kid worse off. There's always going to be a kid that gets a better present. Yeah. I, 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 no, no, no. I, I, I take all of that. But yeah. why would Santa make that choice? Why would Santa give a, a nice gift to one kid and not a nice gift to another kid? Absolutely, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I mean, I do that understand that kids, kids need to learn, you know, mommy and daddy don't have money for this, um, but... And, that, and that's how what my parents explained to me. And he says, look, he says, at the end of the day, he says, all the kids will just get a certain amount. And as a kid, I just believed them because whatever they... Kids will believe anything. So it's up to the parents what way they want to handle that one. All right, stay there for one second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our uh, telephone number. Abba, you're on ninety eight FM. How are you? Hi, Adrian. Good morning. Abba, you uh, agree with this idea of limiting what Santa brings? Uh, have some. Uh, I say it's not. You cannot put a monetary or a numeric number on it, but parents need to be more sensitive and aware and be conscious of what it can do to other children. The spirit of Santa and all these things is a teaching behind it. You be good and you get something, and you try to bring some kind of learning out of it, and there's a magic around it. So it's not really fair. By all means, you spoil your children and indulge, but uh, don't make it from Santa. Leave Santa for the better things. Okay, stay there for one second. Uh, Laura, um... You know, there are people who just don't have the money or end up getting into ridiculous debt over uh, this fellow with the white beard. Uh, I completely understand, Adrian, but my feeling on it is, like, my children wouldn't get a lot all throughout the year. Mm. Like, they'll get something for their birthday. So at Christmas, whatever they ask for is what they get because, I, like, they wouldn't ask for now ten things like that other one was saying. They wouldn't have a list of ten things wrong. They might be three or four things, and, yeah, they would be quite expensive. But, like, it's once a year, and I do feel sorry for people who don't have it, but at the same time, I don't feel my children should be punished. No, 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 nobody's, nobody 
even in this whole no, conversation, know, has said that they should be punished. No, I know, but like that's how it would feel to me. I don't see why my children should lose out because somebody. Okay, else let, can't let, let's say, let's say, you know you were, I mean? you, let's say you were getting the kids an expensive gift, uh, or one of them an expensive gift, a big bike or whatever, yeah. some, a, a, um, a games console or something that's expensive yeah. enough. Why couldn't you say that that's from me, and the the because, other stuff is from Santa? Because I feel like your children. They're not children forever, like, and I mean, I have a, I have a 14 year old who, uh, he doesn't believe in Santa, he hasn't done since he went to secondary school. I have an 11 year old who's in sixth class, she doesn't necessarily believe in Santa, but I have a six year old too who does, and I think you're, the years are so short that they actually believe in Santa, that I think they should get what they want. Like, I mean, if you think when they're born, first of all, the first two Christmases, they haven't really got a clue about Santa anyway, so they don't really ask for much. So you've, yeah, I know it's only a couple of years, yeah. At best, you have eight years. Like they should get what they ask for. Well, as far as I'm concerned, my children will get what they ask for. But like this year, my six-year-old asked for a scarf. That's literally all he asked Santa for was a scarf. And that's so, lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, know, that's I great. Mean, it is. That's his innocence. Like yeah. you know, like not every year is going to be an expensive year. So I don't. I understand why some people can't afford to get their children what they want. But at the same time, I don't feel like the rest of us should have to say, oh, look it. First of all, no, not everybody's going to do it anyway. Not everybody's going to say, oh, well, that expensive present is from Mammy and Daddy because Santa doesn't bring those kind of presents. You know that kind of way? Not everyone's going to do it. You're always going to have one that's not going to want to say, oh, that's from me. It's not from Santa. You know that kind of way? So I, I just, first of all, I don't think it'll ever work. And secondly, like I said, it's once a year. And for those people who can't afford, like, they know it's coming every year. I mean, can they put a little bit aside each month or something to cover the cost of something if they think their child really wants something at Christmas? Okay, so what would you say to some parents who believe, you know, you're making other kids feel bad? Like that lady in her post said, um, yeah. this is the second year I've had a parent cry to me telling me that their yeah. kid asked if they weren't good enough or if Santa didn't like them as much. Well, I, first of all, I don't believe I'm making their children feel bad. Like... I am making my children feel good. That's the difference. Do you know what I mean? Like, they can't be putting pressure on other parents saying, oh, look, I can't afford to buy my children this, so therefore you shouldn't, or if you are going to say it's from you and not from Santi. Like, that's not fair either. You why know, why, why not? Why not? Like, because why, it's not, like, why can we not have a situation where Santa's the man who brings loads of little gifts, uh, and then, and then Mammy, the Mammy and Daddy are the wonderful people who buy the nice gifts? But Santa was always the man who brought the presents. Like, growing up, my mother and father never said, oh, well, them three things are from Santa, but this is from us. You know what I mean? And, like, when I was growing up, we didn't get a lot of Christmas, but what we got, we were grateful for. You know? Like, I think it's more about children being grateful for what they're getting rather than, oh, am I not good enough to get something better? You know? Like, the parents of them children who can't afford to buy the expensive presents should kind of limit their expectations throughout the year rather than wait until Christmas opening their eyes and saying, oh, God, I wasn't good enough to get that. All right, uh, stay there for a moment. Uh, let me take another couple of calls in on this. On 67979891, you can text or WhatsApp the programme 0877989898. Eileen, you're on Dublin's 98FM. Hi, Eileen. Hiya, how are you? Good, thank you. It's a difficult one to deal with, isn't it? It is. Well, I, I mean, I'm in my 60s now, but when my children were little, I used to, and I don't know whether it's the right or the wrong thing, but what I used to say to them was they could ask for one thing and a surprise. And I always used to tell them that I had to leave money to help Santa so that if the thing they asked for, I couldn't afford because I couldn't always afford what they wanted. I used to say, well, I can't leave that much money for Santa. Now we'll pick something else. And they went with that because they're kids. You know what I mean? I just think kids nowadays... Now, maybe that is a compromise that, um, yeah. you know, well, parents uh, admit that they have to actually give Santa a few bob. Yeah, well, well, the way I put it was, I used to say, Santa can't afford just to... They have, he has to make all these things, and he needs help money-wise, and parents have to leave money to help. And I'd say, well, that's too expensive. I can't leave that much money. But my the expectations back in those days were less... Things were less expensive, so... I was generally able to get them kind of what they want. Maybe no, not always exactly. But if they wanted something I knew I couldn't afford, I would talk them out of it. Because they were only kids. 
Now, they were disappointed sometimes, but they were acceptable as well. I just think children nowadays, and I have grandchildren, don't get me wrong, I think they kind of get everything they want, and that's not good for them. It's not a life Mm. lesson they should be learning. You know what I mean? Well, stay there for one second. 67979981 is our telephone number. Um, here's a message that we've just gotten uh, in, and it says, Some parents send money to Santa if the present is expensive because Santa doesn't give very expensive presents. And that's fine, but I, I don't think every parent does that. If every parent did do that, then that'd be grand. Um... Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. We just got this voice message uh, sent in to us on WhatsApp. People shouldn't be having children if they can't afford to have children and stop making other fe- people feel bad because they have money. Simple as. And stop trying to, like, wrap kids in cotton wool. I mean, at the end of the day, we all had shit Christmas presents when we were kids years ago, but we all got over it. Hmm. OK, D- James, that was you who sent that message. Yes, it was. I was listening... I don't know, I'm a little bit annoyed listening to sob stories about it, you know. It, it's nonsense, like, you know, you're having kids, you know they're going to be expensive, you know what I mean? It's the one time of the year that you should be splashing out at them. And, like, so what if kids, like, oh, I didn't get this, I didn't get... Years ago, there's four of us in our family, and what I used we used to laugh at, the eldest girl, she was the favourite. So we say we got five presents, there was always one behind the tree for her. Right. But we got over it, you know? It wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I know, but I, I, like I said, the example that I gave was the the kid in our road who wanted a bike for Christmas, didn't get a bike for Christmas. We all got a bike for Christmas. How do you think he felt? Yeah, that's on that's on that's on those parents, though. Do you know what I mean? That is on those parents. And like, you know, I've got like family members as well. That every year you hear, oh, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, but they're well able to go to the pub nearly every weekend. So, so in know. other words. You know Santa is coming uh, yeah. on Christmas Eve night. You have all year to prepare for Santa coming on Christmas Eve night. There's yeah. no excuse for him not to bring to your kids what he brings to the others. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, what's another problem with parents as well is that every day of the week, if a child wants something out of the shop, they're getting it straight away. So, I mean, if they put a stop to a lot of that, they'd have the money at the end of the year for the kids. Yeah, okay. No, it's, it's, it, I mean, the point being, the main point being, you have all year to prepare for this. Yeah, like I, I, I explained to you, right, just four in our family and two are wingers and me and my other sister, we're workers and we've always worked. And it's the same stuff every year. Now, my other two sisters will have a better social life than me and my sister who works. But my other sister, she'd be very organised. She's got two kids. She does all her saving pretty much through the year and then gets it all done by September, October. Where the other two, you know, there's not, there's not even a mention of Christmas till December, and then it's a mad panic. All right, stay there. Uh, let me just bring in one or two very quick calls. Laura, you're on 98 FM. Hiya, Laura. Hello. Oh, sorry, Sabrina. My apologies. Sabrina, how are you? Hi, Adrian. Now, Sabrina, um, what happens in your house? Um, well, I just say to the kids, it was like last night we were sitting down and we were writing out their list. And then the, like, the presents were going on and on and on. And I said, no, you can't ask for that many presents because you have to ask for one big thing. And then Santi will bring a few little things because Mommy and Daddy, when we go to bed at night, we have to put the envelope on the fireplace. And when he comes down the chimney, he'll check what money is in the envelope. And then that's how many presents he has to leave. Aha. Because we have to pay for Santi. And then with that, they turned around and they both said, oh, that's grand. Can we just get them? Like, she wanted Peppa Pig pajamas and he wanted Hulk pajamas. Uh, but I just want then that one big thing. She wanted a walking dog, uh, you know, that attaches to the lead and it walks. Mm. And that was it. And there was nothing else said about it. And that's what way it used to be for us years ago. And we always used to appreciate what we got. So, you, so the kids, so you leave an envelope on the. On the mantelpiece. Yeah, for Santa. that's what we say to yeah. them, but they never and see the envelope because they're asleep. No, oh, even yeah, yeah, but uh, no, that's fair enough. And um, that is telling them that if you ask for too much, we're not going to be able to get it. Yeah, because mommy and daddy have to pay for Santi. He needs the help. He needs to make the presents, so we have to pay for it. Maybe that's the solution. Then is it that parents? I would think so because if you're limiting, if you're going to limit it to let's say two hundred euro. Sure, you could get, an, let's say, an iPhone for 200 euro, and then another child, they, the parent might want to get them with the iPhone and can get them 10 presents for 200 euro. Mm. And either way, whether you say it's from Santi or it's from Mammy and Daddy, the child's still going to get the iPhone. The other child's going to say, well, why didn't I get it? His Mammy and Daddy bought it for him. Why couldn't you buy it for me as well? You know, you're still going to have that on your hands. 
Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, even if Mammy and Daddy are paying. All right, let me read out just one or two more messages. No excuse, no matter what circumstances, uh, all children should have uh, what they asked for on Christmas morning. That's what life is all about, making your children happy, uh, says that message. And, um, sorry, for it. there was one more message I wanted to read here. Um, it's awful saying that you pay Santa. Where's the magic in that? Well, what do you say to that, um, Sabrina? Uh, no, it's not awful. They have a list and you say, like, that's our money. Santa, you can get what's on your list there with all that money. They're still getting the majority of what they want on their list. And then they're probably getting a few other little bits that they didn't ask for. They're still going to be delighted with what they're getting. They're children. They're not going to think, why didn't I get more? Why didn't I get more? That's the parents putting it on other parents. That's, that's boasting about other things. They're children. They're going to appreciate if they get a cardboard box. All right, and uh, one one more message. Not all expensive gifts need to be expensive. Bikes can be bought secondhand. iPads can be bought secondhand or refurbished, and they are a fraction of the uh, recommended retail price. No need to get into debt for Christmas, and kids get the presents they want. Problem uh, solved. And a final message here. Um... Oh, oh yeah, this is a. I have a credit union account set up now for uh, a tenner a week. As he gets older, I know he will want more expensive toys. So with a tenner a week, I'm prepared for the coming years. In other words, as a lot of people are saying, uh, don't let Santa not bring a nice present for your child. Make sure he does, and make sure you make it happen, and make sure you save or put a tenner in the credit union or do whatever you have to to make sure that Santa brings what your child wants. Interesting conversation, though. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. We're here till midday today. On the way after the break, our Say What You See quiz. I have a €100 Euro voucher from Des Kelly Interiors to give away to the winner of our quiz. If you want to take part, call us right now at 67979081. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher for beds, flooring and more. 98 FM. It's time for our Say What You See quiz. Our Jeremy's on uh, a day off today. So we have a new recruit to play our Say What You See quiz. 98 FM's Kieran O'Connor is here and I can tell by the look on his face he's a nervous wreck. You say recruit, it was more a case if you looked around the office and went, oh, God, oh, he'll have to do, won't he? Well, no, I couldn't find anyone else because they're all gone off to set up the Christmas party. Exactly. Kieran will have to do. So Kieran is a nervous wreck. He's never played the game before. He knows how it works, but that's about it. So if you want to take part in our Save What You See quiz, call us right now uh, at 67979081. Now, Richie is our first contestant. Richie, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Richie? How's it going, all right? Good, Richie. Now... Who do you want to play with, Adrian or Kieran? Uh, Adrian, please. Adrian it is. OK, now you have a minute on the clock. Try and get as many of these right as we possibly can. Are you ready? Yeah. OK, your one minute starts now. There you go. Oh, this is something uh, that you uh, that kids say to each other if they're not telling the truth. And it's... Uh, in fact, we had this last week and somebody didn't get well, it. Well, pants on fire. Oh, that's exactly right. Good man. Uh, how's that still in the pile? I don't know how that's still in the pile. Okay, uh, next one. Come on. Oh, you have to give oh, me yeah, another. Sorry. Yeah, you have to keep going, Kieran. Oh, this is uh, when you're. How do I just. At the Christmas party, there was all sorts of this going on. All sorts of. And it's like a. a it's, it's an Irish Skull word. Uh, no, not skullduggery. Um, it sounds like a Kaylee or something. It's. Uh, there was shenanigans. Ah, no. that's exactly right. There was all sorts of shenanigans going on. This also happens at the um, Christmas party. Oh, this also happens at the Christmas party. Uh, he hits on her, and at the end of the night, he manages to get something over. He gets his leg over. He gets yes. his leg over is the right answer. You're on three, you're flying along. Um, oh, this was a song by Diana Ross and the Supremes. Train the action. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, when you come to a set of traffic lights, what do you do? Stop in the name of love. Yeah. <laughs> That's the right answer. Do you know what? I'm going to give you a half a point for singing it, okay? So you've got four and a half. <laughs> okay, lads. Oh, man, Richie, you're in the lead with a All score right. of four and a half. Stop in the name of love was the answer. Uh, well done, Richie. Okay, so he's got a half a point extra. Dennis is our next contestant. Dennis, welcome to 98 FM. Good morning. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? Now, who would you like to play our Say What You See quiz with? Um, Adrian or Kieran? Uh, 
I'll go with yourself, Adrian. I'll go with myself. Okay. Um, now, you have a minute on the clock, Kieran. Oh, no, you're not Kieran. You're Dennis. A minute on the clock, Dennis. You're trying to beat a score of four and a half. Okay. And your minute starts now. Okay, uh, say if there was a fire in this building, something will go off. What would go off? A fire alarm. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, 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 you wake up in the morning with it. Yeah, you wake up in the morning with it as well. Morning glory. <laughs> Jeez, that's, your, that's your own business. <laughs> no, that's not really what I was getting at. Um, it, it, your phone does this in the morning to, to wake you up. An alarm? Uh, yeah, alarm what? ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling Bell. Alarm bell. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Okay, here comes your next one. Um, this is it's an expression us Irish use when we were, were really sick. You've got us. You've got something. What is it? When we're really sick. Yeah, you've got. It's not a good one. It's a. What's the opposite of good? Bad. Yeah, a bad what? Flu. No. Mm, no. You also sometimes call people this. You've got a bad what? Call. Uh, you could have a bad cold, but you would tell all your mates, oh, jeez, I'm dying, I've got a bad... No. You have a something to the flu. No. Man flu? No, no, it's no. no. Did you ever tell your mates, uh, uh, Dennis, that... Uh, oh, do you know what? I've got a bad dose. Bad dose. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thanks, Dennis. David is next. David, welcome to 98FM. Oh, yeah, genuine. David, who would you like to say, uh, play our Save As You See quiz, Adrian or Kieran? I would give Kieran a go. Oh, I give Kieran a lash. Good man, that's good. <laughs> um, okay, you've a minute on the clock. We're trying to beat a score of four and a half, and your one minute starts now. You're ready now. Okay, so uh, when it rains outside, it's lashing. It's lashing loads. You sometimes do this in the toilet as well. You go to the jacks and you. <laughs> oh, uh... If you're in the bathroom, you're you're going in for number one. Right. A real Dublin it's, term. It's, pee, it's peeing down. Yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, but out of, like, really high in the sky. It's... Oh, it's, it's pissing down. Yeah, yeah. We'll give it to him. We'll give it to you. Pissing out of the heavens. P pissing out of the heavens. Okay, here's your next one. Are uh, you ready for this? Uh, okay, it's a song, and it's the middle of the country. There's north and south of it uh, in this county. Tipperary. Yeah, but... Uh, long way to yes. long way Tipperary. Is the right answer. Here comes your next one. Okay, uh, so if you're going to uh, rob a bank, you need someone to do it with you. Who are you going to do it with? You're not going to be on your own. They're accomplice. Yeah, sometimes they call quit. Partner in crime. Partner, uh, partner, yes, partner in yes, crime yes. is the right answer. You're doing well. Here's you're your next doing, one. Uh, oh, when someone's talking about you and you're outside, uh, there's fire involved in it. Uh, you might use these to hear your ears as are well. burning. Yes, your ears are burning go. is the right answer. Here comes your next one. Okay. Uh, Robbie Williams had this song. It's about up in the sky. Uh, I'm no loving clear, angels instead. Uh, angels. Uh, too late now. Too late. <laughs> four you got, I'm afraid, uh, David. All right, all Not right, enough. David. Richie got four and a half, so Richie's in the lead with uh, with four and a half. Okay. Who's next? Barry is next. Barry, you're on 98 FM. How are hey, you? Man. Good, thank you, all Barry. Right. Welcome to Dublin Talks. Who would you like to play with? Merry Adrian? Christmas. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, who would you like to play oh, with, Adrian me. or Kieran? Whatever Kieran is, and you're... Sorry? Uh, we'll go with Kieran. You're oh, going thanks. with Kieran. Lucky Kieran. I wish I was you, Kieran. Oh, I love this game. It's great. You, uh, Barry, were you at your Christmas party already? No. Oh, no, it's just, it just sounded like you've just come home from the Christmas party. Yeah. But, okay, Barry, you have a minute on the clock and uh, your one minute starts now. Good luck with this one, Kieran. Right, Barry, okay. come on. So, uh, not a mammy's boy, the opposite of that. What? Ma Sorry, the you're a radio son. Are you all right there? You're still at the Christmas party. Yeah, no, my radio was in the... Well, turn the bloody <laughs> thing down! You're wasting time what, here now. What was the question? Right. Not, not, not a mammy's boy. The opposite of a mammy's boy. Daddy's girl. Yeah. Daddy's girl. It only took okay, you about 20 seconds. Okay, I'm excellent. Turn this off. Uh, okay, so uh, your parents might say this to you if you had a friend over in the house, a friend of, you know, you were going upstairs, and they say, don't be doing any of that but like I'd say that on the radio yeah you can't go on <laughs> say it <laughs> well, well say it quick right so Katie it's... how did this man get on this show <laughs> right oh, say it quick your parents might say to you you're going upstairs with your girlfriend and they say don't be doing any of that upstairs uh, right, not uh, shop owners. No, no, nookie kooky. Shop, <laughs> nookie kooky. So, sorry, Barry, when your parents uh, back in the day said to you, don't be up to any nookie kooky, is that what they said? <laughs> what? No, what? Oh, thank God that minute's over. <laughs> it was that a long was the minute. longest minute of my life. 
Barry, enjoy the rest of the Christmas party. Uh, Ashling, Barry. good morning, Ashling. Hi, good morning. How are you? At least you sound a little bit sober. <laughs> my God. Yeah. It's Did my ever... turn. From, it's my turn tomorrow night to sound like that. Oh, tomorrow. right, okay. Yeah, but I'd expect you to sound like that at night, not at uh, five, to, <laughs> 5 to 12 in the morning. That's anyway, um, Ashling, who do you want to play with, Adrian or Kieran? Uh, I'll go with Kieran. Oh, Kieran. Okay. everyone's loving me now. Thanks, Ashling. Uh, <laughs> now, you have to beat four and a half, uh, so you've a minute to do it. Minute starts now. Okay, it's a type of music, and uh, what's... You know the the head, shoulders, knees, and what's another body part? Give me another body part. You use this every day to type. Uh, fingers. No, uh, your what your, arms? Your, what's the, your fingers attached to? Your hands. Okay, and it's a type of music, and they shake their hands in the theater, and they go the. What do they do? Type of music. Oh, they use your mum was doing jazz it on hands. Yeah. Jazz, jazz hands. hands. That's the right answer. Jazz hands. Here comes your next one. Uh, okay, so before you. Do the the first time, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, it, yeah. It, it does not a movie on this, but uh, uh, you're free. Like you do this again, you you lose your what when you're young? Are you with me here, Ashley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you go and do the do, and you lose yeah. your, you know. Your virginity. Yeah, okay, but but you do it all over again. You're you're a you're a, a new person. Yeah, you come on. Born again. Born again. Yeah, born again. Born yes. again version is the right answer. Here's your next one. Okay, so, uh, oh God, this, Jesus. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> that is a very tough one. Okay, so you get one of these uh, at Christmas, <laughs> it's full of chocolates. Selection box? Yeah, uh, natural selection. <laughs> Close. How, how am I going to? <laughs> I don't know, that's a hard one. Thanks, Ashling. you, you <laughs> only got two, you only got two. And Vanessa, final contestant today, Vanessa. Hiya. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Now, Vanessa, we're trying to beat a score of uh, four and a half, which you'd think wouldn't be difficult to do, but it appears it yeah, is this week. They're very hard questions. Who do you want to play with, Adrian or Kieran? Uh, Adrian. Okay, right. Uh, ready? Okay, a okay. minute on the clock. Are you ready? Yep. And your one minute starts now. Um, oh, I think this was a catchphrase for uh, Cadbury's Flake. It's not the heavier way to... It's the... The lighter way. The lighter way to what? Enjoy chocolate. That's the right answer. The lighter way to enjoy chocolate. Here comes your uh, next one. This was a Michael Jackson song back in the day. The way you make me feel. It is the correct answer. Here's your next one. Oh, um, it's not an adult one. It's not an adult Jaws. It's a little small Jaws. A little small what? You know who Jaws was. What was Jaws? Shark. Baby yeah. Shark. Baby yeah. Shark is the correct Sounds answer. Well. well done. Here comes your next one. Uh, this is something a magician might say. Not abracadabra, but... <laughs> hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is the right answer. Here comes your next one. Um, oh, whoa. Oh, this is an expression that you use for a woman who's um, uh, lovely to take out, but my God, she's mad in the bedroom. Uh, wild woman. Um... Mm. Hoor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it's Friday. Oh, you know it's Friday. You know it's Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> the expression was... <laughs> oh, my God. A lady on the streets, but a freak between the sheets. Did you ever hear that before, M- Vanessa? You there? Oh, she's just In gone. the most Dublin accent. A uh, hoover. A uh, <laughs> The winner of our quiz this week with a score of four and a half is uh, Richie. Congratulations, Richie. You've won our Save As You See quiz. A 100 euro voucher for Des Kelly Interiors is yours. Kieran, thanks very much. Thank you, indeed. Adrian. That's 98 FM's Kieran O'Connor. You can hear him every night of the week between 10 and 12. And also the weekend. Yeah, 9 to 12 tomorrow morning. Excellent. Shameless plug. Oh, after the party? Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, I do. Anyway, have, a great, go, have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back Monday morning, 10 a.m. We're off for our Christmas party tonight, so... Whew, here goes nothing. See you Monday. Barry's on the way in the next hour. He's got some great music lined up like these. Oh, I can't wait to see those faces. FM Dublin Talks with the Des Kelly Interiors gift voucher. The perfect present this Christmas. 98 FM.